and brother, and actually my sister, uh, we have Elder, Elder <laughs> Williams, and also his wonderful wife, Sister Zena, uh, with us today. Um, we're going to go ahead and uh, walk right into our biblical question and air, uh, answer session. And uh, so right now, we're going to do as we always do, as our custom, uh, we're going to open up with the law. Go ahead and open up, my friend. Okay, Exodus 20, it says, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt not, thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or is in the earth beneath or that is in the waters under the earth. <clears throat> thou shalt not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I am the Lord thy God am a jealous God visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation and of them that hate me and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord thy God name in vain for Lord, <clears throat> for the Lord will hold them guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the seas and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his maid manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Praise, praise God for the reading of the law. This is how you get salvation. A lot of people don't understand Salvation is only to those who keep his law and uh, believe <clears throat> in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and go right into we have a we have a, a list of questions. However, all those who have questions on the live stream, I'm gonna go ahead and say this. All those who have questions on the live stream, please place those questions in the comment section. I will go ahead and get to those questions as soon as I see them. All right. Um, and, and also, we're going to uh, look also at questions that we have from last week. We've been getting a lot of questions, and I just want everybody to know that we are addressing those questions. One other thing that uh, somebody brought this up to me, uh, we do not... Uh, say the names of the ones who ask the questions because we we don't want anyone to be embarrassed. Uh, so we, we really look out for everybody in that regard. We love you and we just want you to be edified, whomever you may be. Amen? Amen. All right. So, uh, Sister Sister Zena, uh, tell, yes, tell us, what's our first question? What we have? Our first question is, is it acceptable for a male to shave and iron clothes before church on the Sabbath? All right, good question, good question. Let's go ahead and go right to uh, the book as far as that's concerned. We're gonna go to, uh, we're gonna go to Exodus, not Exodus, we're going to Leviticus, Leviticus 23, I'm sorry. Leviticus 23. And uh, we're going to pick it up on the one. 
and we're going to see something here. No, well, we're going to pick it up on verse 3. Verse 3. Let's go ahead and pick it up on verse 3. Let's go ahead and see that. Go ahead and read it. Verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but seventh day is the Sabbath of rest and holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. So it don't matter where you are, it is a holy convocation. Now, that is the big key right there. It is a holy convocation. You do not want to go to a convocation smelling bad, looking bad, and you are, and since it's holy, you are to be looking your best. Okay? So, yes, men, shave yourself and make sure that you are looking your best. If you have to go ahead and iron something to make that holy convocation holy for you, do what you have to do to be in that holy convocation. That is the key to make it a holy convocation. Do all that you can to prepare for it, but shaving, taking a shower, making sure your hair is right. Yes, sir. It is holy and make sure that you are in that convocation and you're looking your best. I hope that answers your question. All right. What's the next question? Good question, though. Good question. Next question, Pastor, is my dog died on May 30th. He was cremated and I picked his ashes up on yesterday. Unbeknownst to me, I'm told that I'm clean. I'm unclean. I took the urn and the ashes and put them in the garage until I know what to do. This is a threefold question. First uh, question uh, is, do I destroy the ashes and the urn? All right. Do, and what is the other one? Do, uh, bury it, give to a relative, Uh -huh. Keep on going. Am I unclean now for how long? Can oh. I participate in any, any feast? What do I do? Good question. Uh, now, I'm so sorry that your dog died, but we're going to go ahead and see what the scriptures have to say about this. Okay. Um. We had to deal with something like this uh, just this past Sabbath day. And we had to, we could not have our Sabbath class uh, because they had a funeral in the sanctuary and it was, uh, it was deemed unclean. And we're gonna show you why. Let's go to the book of Numbers, the book of Numbers. And we're going to pick it up at Numbers 19, the 19th chapter of Numbers. Yeah, that 19th chapter of Numbers. Um, Okay, and since it was last week, uh, it's, it's always to even when you have to deal with this, okay? So we're going to go to um, um, Let's go ahead and pick it up at verse 10. Verse 10, 19 and 10. Go ahead and read. And he <clears throat> and he that gathereth the let's, ashes. Let's start with it at verse 9. I'm sorry. Okay. And a man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the he heifer. The heifer. Uh huh. The heifer, excuse me, heifer, and lay them up without the camp in, <clears throat> in a clean place. And it shall be kept for a congregation of the children of Israel for a water of separation. It is purification for sin. 
Okay, that's the heifer to clean the, 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 the temple. We understand that, but let's go ahead and find something else out. Verse 10, go ahead and read. And he that gathereth the ashes of the heifer shall wash his clothes and be unclean until the eve. And it shall be unto the children of Israel and unto the stranger that is sojourneth among them for a statue forever. All right. So the, the, the ashes of that animal, the heifer is a female cow. Okay. So the ashes of the heifer, uh, once he gathers those up, he is uh, he's unclean until the even. Okay. After he cleaned himself up. Okay. Go ahead and read verse 11. He that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. Okay, so that was the reason why we could not be in the temple or in the sanctuary because of a dead body was there. Okay, let me show you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you all all the way right. Let's go ahead and read verse thirteen. Whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead and purify purifieth not himself, defileth the tabernacle of the Lord, and that soul shall be cut off from Israel, because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him. He shall be unclean. His uncleanliness is yet upon him. Uh-huh. Hmm. So now, now we're going into the whole situation of the um, uh, of the of the sanctuary or wherever the tent or the dwelling. Okay, read read 14. This is the law. When a man dieth in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. And that is why we cannot defile ourselves. One thing I'm gonna tell everybody is this, uh, I, uh, even for me, uh, there's certain times when there's family members that had died and they want me to attend that funeral. I'll, I will always go to, uh, to, to that family member's uh, funeral, but I will not go inside of the place. I will hug and give condolences, especially on the Sabbath day, because I know that I cannot be unclean especially with me being a teacher of the word of God. That is not going to work before our God. The same thing for the ashes of your dog. Now, the ashes of your dog, bury them because that is where everything goes back to. It goes back to the dust. Amen? All Amen. right. This is what the word of, the God, word of God is. Uh, why did I say bury it? It's because the one, someone had to gather up the ashes of the heifer. And then after they gathered the ashes of the, that heifer, they had to go ahead and dispose of it in the ground. And then they had to clean themselves up with water. We just read it. Man. All right. Great question. I hope that you become edified with that. What's the next question? The next question is, are women allowed to preach at EGW? Oh, good question. <laughs> good question. Are women allowed to preach at EGW? Let's go ahead and deal with this. Let's go to 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. And then I'm going to go to where, where it is listed. Uh, that a woman should not uh, usurp authority. And we're going to get some understanding, okay? 1 Corinthians 11, and we're going to begin reading at verse 1. We're going to get some understanding, okay? Okay, so verse 1, uh, Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Okay. Now, now, now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things and yes. keep ordinances as I delivered them to you. So, Paul, what are these ordinances that you're delivering to us? Go ahead and read. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, 
Yeah. And the head of every uh, the head of the woman is the man. Yes. And the head of Christ is God. So you see how the order is. God, the Father sitting on the throne, then the <laughs> Christ, which is the word, and then man, and then after man, oh, here it is, the woman, because the woman came from the man. If you see where it come, how it works out? The woman came from the man, the man came from Christ, and the Christ, and Christ and, and the Father, they dwell forever. We don't know that they have a beginning or end. See, well, I can go read about Melchizedek. It says he doesn't have no, he doesn't have a beginning, no mother nor father. Okay, so we're not gonna get into all that, but let's go ahead and see about should a woman be able to preach? Okay, go ahead and read. And every and every man praying and prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. What is prophecy? Prophecy is reading the word of God, teaching the word of God, for and for, uh, forth telling, not foretelling, forth telling. Okay? That is what prophecy is. Okay? I'm going to show you that it's forth telling, not foretelling. You know, you get so many people, I'm going to prophesy to you and I'm going to tell you what's going on in the future. Come on now. You want to know what's going on in the future? Get in this book. It's going to—it's a whole lot of future for you, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna prophesy and tell you, hey, you're gonna you're gonna receive a check in the mail on Monday, and Monday is fifteenth. <laughs> 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 it's only real. No, we we ain't gonna do that. Prophesying is foretelling in the Word of God. So. I cannot read the word of God with my head covered. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and get into something else with this too, because you know, uh, this thing is all misconstrued as well. I'm going to go ahead and, and show you your love, your, your love, your, uh, your lovely wife, uh, Elder Williams in a few minutes. I'm going to show and give her an example. Okay. Go ahead okay. and read first but, every, but every woman prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncover dishonoreth her head for that is even all one as if she were shaven oh so she dishonors her head mm -hmm. oh i'm gonna go ahead and show something ladies and gentlemen this is our dear sister williams look at her look at her real fast i'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and do it like this <laughs> She has her head covered because she's not only honoring her head, which is beside her, she is honoring the head of her faith, which is Jesus. Okay? Keep your finger there, brother. Okay. I'm going to show something to some people because I, I'm tired of this. I'm, I have to deal with it. Let's go to Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54. Isaiah 54, for all my single women who out there who try to say, hey, well, uh, look here, I, I ain't got no covering. I ain't got no, I, I don't have no uh, no husband. Okay, let me go ahead and show you who your husband is. Isaiah 54, and pick it up at verse 5, and then we're going to go back to uh, 1 Corinthians. Go ahead and read, brother. For thy maker is thine husband, the Whoa. Lord of hosts. Whoa. <laughs> the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So who's your husband if you're single? God. Come on, sisters. <laughs> yes. That's him. All right, go back to 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians. Hold on here, Pastor. 1 Corinthians 11. Okay. okay. Now, go ahead and pick it up here. At, um, uh, let's pick it up at verse 10 because I'm going to deal with this head covering because she, this is the only way that a woman is able to prophesy or pray, teach anything. 
So are they able to do it here at EGW? Well, this say they can. <laughs> go ahead and uh, go ahead and read. Verse ten: For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. She got power on her head. Why? Because of the angels. Why did it say because of the angels? I need for you to keep your marker there, brother, because we got to go right back. We got to go see something. We got to see an angel mess with a woman. Okay. You didn't know that an angel messed with a woman? Let me go ahead and show you where an angel messed with a woman. Let's go to Genesis, the third chapter. Ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. We're going to see where an angel messed with a woman. Genesis, the third chapter. And pick it up on the one, brother, because, you know, we got to see this. Okay. Now the serpent was more subtle, subtle, subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree in the garden? You see this angel messing with this woman? Yep. <laughs> what? Wait, hold on, hold on. They said, they said, they said, uh, it can't be an angel, it's a serpent. It's a serpent, right? Mm -hmm. oh, hold on. We got we we travel in the word of God. Let's go to Revelation. Okay. The twelfth chapter. Revelations. Revelation the twelfth chapter. And pick it up at verse seven. Okay, got it. Hold on here, sir. Have a little trouble. It's all right. We got time. <laughs> and verse 7 says, and there was a war in heaven. Michael mm -hmm. and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels. And guess what he didn't do? Read on. Prevaileth not. Uh -huh. Was there place found any more in heaven? Verse wow. 9. And the dra great dragon was cast out, the old serpent called. That old what? The old serpent called that old serpent that was way back in the beginning. This cat's an angel, mm -hmm. and he messed with the woman. Now we can go back to First Corinthians eleven. Okay, First Corinthians eleven. Okay, now read that verse ten all over again. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. So you have power on your head, woman, because of the angels. Oh, that's why. All right. So now we have the understanding. A woman can preach, prophesy, read, as long as she follows the ordinance that was handed down by our dear brother Paul. <laughs> <laughs> Do it again. Do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Great question. Thank you so very much. Let's go ahead and go to the next question. That was a great question. I hope you became edified. That was a good question. <clears throat> Can you explain Hebrews 8 and 11. Is this after Jesus's return, after the millennium, or after everyone has been taught? Let's go ahead and go to that Hebrews 8 and verse 11. Hebrews 8 and verse 11. Let's go ahead and get there. Yeah, we're going to find out about that. Hebrews 8 and verse 11. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read it. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. 
Okay. Now we go. This is when, uh, this is exactly when Jesus come back. Okay. Let's go ahead and find out. Let's back up to verse eight. Because we're this is when the covenants is being changed over. Verse 8. Go ahead and read. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Uh-huh. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand and led them out of the land of Egypt because mm -hmm. they continued not in my covenant and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. Uh-huh, now look here. There are some people who are saying that this part have not been done yet, but this is broken up into two parts. Let me go ahead and show you why it's broken up in two parts. We're going to Daniel, the eighth chapter. Daniel, the eighth chapter. <clears throat> let me see let me see if i can find this real fast see i think i'm right here at it i gotta find out exactly where it's at uh i'm in search mode just give me a little bit i'm searching for it i know it's in daniel it might be wrong on the eighth chapter It's not Daniel 8, it's Daniel 9. There it is. It's right there. Okay. Daniel 9, and let's pick it up at um All right. Let's pick it up at verse 26. I'm sorry about that. I had to go in search mode. I haven't went over these questions first. I, I just got the questions and we just we just going. And so you all are getting it right from off the cuff. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Nine and verse 26. Go ahead and read. And after three, three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. Amen. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary and the end thereof shall be with a flood and unto the end of the war desolation are determined amen this, that happened when jesus uh, died okay go ahead and read let's go ahead and see when he died and this is a two-part situation go ahead and read and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week now, and how he, long is one week? He got one week to do his whole job. One week to do his whole job. Okay, go ahead and read. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. For the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even unto the, even unto the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. 
Okay, so he's going to cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease in the midst of the week. It's a double situation. He had to die on a Wednesday, the first situation, but he, his ministry was for one week. Seven years is his ministry, right? Jesus started his ministry at the age of 30. I can prove that to you. You can go ahead and read when Jesus got anointed as the Messiah, as the Christ. He was about 30 years old is what the Bible said. And he died three and a half years later. What is half of seven? Three and a three half. Three and a half. Three and a half. So he went on and had one part of that Hebrews 8 done in the first half, then the other part is going to be ha happen in the three and a half years that he has to minister in the, uh, when he comes back. Mm. Mm -hmm. You see how it's half and half? We got a whole bunch of people want to go ahead and say, well, that's all in one thing. You understand. What, uh, what, what did uh, John say? He was, I was in the spirit in the Lord's day. What do you mean by that? There is no time. He's seen the past, the present, and the future all at the same time. So, verse 10 in chapter 8 is going to happen when he comes back. Because then, uh, let me show you how it's going to happen. Let me show you how it's going to happen because everybody got to be affected, right? That's what verse 10 in uh, Hebrews 8 says, right? We're going yes. to the book of Zephaniah. Say that again, sir. Pastor? We're going to the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah. That's after Habakkuk, right? Yes, Zephaniah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We in group therapy. You can ask. <laughs> Go to, let's go to the third chapter. This is how he's going to make sure everybody is calling on the name of the Lord. How is he going to do it? Zephaniah 3, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. What does it say? For then will I turn to the people a purge, excuse me, a pure language. Yeah, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to In serve the him, the name of the Lord to serve him with one con consent. Oh, so everybody's going to be speaking the same language because he's going to give it to everybody because that's the mountain of the Lord. Mountains mean government, and everybody's going to be speaking that language and they're going to serve the Lord with one consent. That's only when he comes back. So he can do that other three and a half years. All right. Good question. Good mm -hmm. question. Thank you for that question. I hope you became edified off of that one. That's a good question. Let's go to the next one. Please explain Leviticus 19, I'm sorry, 19 and 28. I was speaking to someone and they said, this does not mean just marks for the dead. We should not put on any type of tattoos or marks on our body. Is okay. this true? Let's go ahead and go to that Leviticus 19. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. Numbers. Yeah, we were stopping the Leviticus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's a habit, Pastor. <laughs> Leviticus 19 and 28. Go ahead and read that, brother. It says, Ye shall not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. That is exactly what it meant. It means don't put any marks or anything for the dead. Hmm. If you want to add something to the word of God, woe unto you. If you want to take something away from the word of God, woe unto you again. It clearly said for the dead. 
How many people that you know? Oh well, you know, got on their got on their arm. Rest in peace, Mama. No, you don't supposed to do that. That is a hermetic practice. That is that mm. that is borrowed. That came from Ham. Mm. Okay. Mm. Mm. So you know, I look. I, I'm gonna be transparent. I have a tattoo. Mm -hmm. I got. I got tattoo. I, I'm, I'm special forces, United States Navy. So you know, when you look at you, you look at my my tattoo. It says United States Navy Search and Rescue. That means that, yeah, I, I've been dubbed into the game. <laughs> <laughs> it don't have anything to do with the dead. Okay. Good question. Thank you. What's so can I ask can I ask a, a question to that? Yes. Yeah. So ahead. what if bef what if someone has a tattoo before they came into the truth? Oh, good, good question. Let's go ahead and see that. Uh, let me see if I can find it real fast. Hold again. Um let's see. Romans, the third chapter. Y'all making my head work today. <laughs> <laughs> Romans, the third chapter. And we're going to read uh, verse 25. And we're going to get that answer for you. Verse 25. Go ahead and read. Whom God hath set forth to be a prohibition, um, excuse me, propitiation, a propitiation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of the, of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. So he went on and gave, made remission of sins that are, here it is, past. Past. When you come into the word of God, you what did he tell the woman who uh, who he uh, went on and said uh, when they was getting ready to stone her? Go okay? He that. said, go and sin no more. Guess what? Everything that you did was gone. Let me go ahead and show you something here. Uh, Let's go to Acts the third. Let me see. Let's go. Let's go to Isaiah forty-four. This is gonna blow your mind because this it blew my mind once I read this the first time. I was like, God, you are so awesome. Thank you for being the kind of God that you are. That you are able to just erase it out of my life. Man, Isaiah forty-four. See, because, you know, in all transparency, I have not always been in the truth. I have not always done what thus said the Lord. I was actually the worst sinner in the world. I did all the sins except for homosexuality. <laughs> I did them all. Mm. <laughs> but God, but God. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. What this is what he did to me, okay? This is what he did for me. This is what he did for me. Read verse 21, and we're gonna run into what God did for me. And if he did for me, I know he can do it for you. Go ahead and read. Remember the these, O Jacob and Israel, for thou art my servant. I have formed thee, thou art my servant, O Israel, thou shalt not be forgotten of me. All right, right. What else what have you done? Go ahead and read. I have blotted out as a thick cloud the, thy transgressions. Woo! And as a cloud thy sin. Return unto me, for I have redeemed thee. Thank you, Jesus, for redeeming me. Thank you, Jesus, for Thank blotting you, Jesus. out my transgression. Wow. Thank you. 
Hmm. That's a good question, Sister Zena. I mean, good. somebody needed that one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Thank you. Hmm. You did it for me. Woo! All right. Now back to our normal. <laughs> <laughs> Pastor, you're about to have me go out. <laughs> Okay, next question. Thank you, Lord. Go, go ahead and go. What's the first, first John 4, 18. What does this mean? Because even if you are a loving person, life will always bring fearful situations your way. All right, first John 4, 18. And even though you are a- uh, loving person a loving person life will always bring fearful situations your way first john first john let's go ahead and pick up that 4 18. first john 4 18. what does it say my brother there is no fear in love but perfect love casteth casteth out fear because fear hath torment he that feareth is not made perfect in love okay now there is no fear in love this is what john is saying but what is love what is love do you uh, let's go ahead and identify this real fast let's go ahead and identify what love is okay jesus went on and said it um Jesus went on and said it, and we're going to go ahead and figure out what he's talking about, what love is. Let's go to the 22nd chapter of Matthew. See what Jesus had to say about it. Matthew 22. Matthew 22. We're going to find out what love is, and then we're going to find out why there isn't any fear in love amen let's amen. find out what love is first let's pick it up at verse 37. okay <clears throat> jesus said unto him thou shalt love the lord thy god with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind mm -hmm. this is the first and great commandment yes and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. All right. So this is an old commandment. Nobody ever thinks it's old. They said, well, Jesus just said it here in Matthew. He said it before. He said it in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Let's go ahead and see that in Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. And then we're going to find out what love is. Okay. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter. Okay. Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, and we'll probably just, we don't read verse five, we're going to go right into it. What does it say? Verse five. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. So what is love? If you're going to love the Lord thy God, how do you love? How do you love your neighbor as yourself? We read it already. Let's go ahead and read it again. Exodus 20. Because if you do this, there ain't no fear. Go ahead and read. Read verse 3. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Ain't that loving God? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Go to the next one. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. Ain't that loving God? Yes. That's loving him. He said, thou said, love the Lord thy God with all our heart, soul, and mind, right? Yes. Go ahead, go ahead and read, read verse seven. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Ain't that loving 
God. Yes, sir. How about one more? I'm going to give you one more. Read in the next verse. Remember the Sabbath day to keep Woo. it holy. That's loving <laughs> your God. Yes, it is. Yes. All right. How about this? You know, I, I, I want to know how do I love my neighbor as myself? Let's go ahead and find out how do we love our neighbor as ourselves. Let's skip down to verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Now, ain't that loving your neighbor? Ain't your parents your neighbors? Yes, they are. All right. How else do you love your neighbor? Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not kill. Oh, so you're loving them in that way, right? Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, you ain't going to mess with uh, oh, uh, Brother Big Toe's wife, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, go ahead and read. Thou shalt not steal. Oh, my God. This, this is how you get rid of fear. Because in love, you don't have any fear. If you ain't stealing nothing from nobody, why look over your shoulder? Go ahead and read. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. So you were loving your neighbor because you ain't lying on them now. Uh -huh. Woo! Uh -huh. You're getting the understanding, right? Amen. Let's read the read 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 uh verse 17 now. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Let me let you know something. That is loving your neighbor. And if you love me, you ain't got to fear. If I'm sitting up here lusting after somebody else's girl and everything, I got to fear. I got to fear on two ways. I got to fear for that dude that I'm listening after his girl, and I got to fear for my wife because my wife is crazy. <laughs> so is mine. <laughs> you understand? Yes. All right. Good question. I hope that you became edified with it. Go ahead and read the next one. Black hummingbirds. Is there such a thing in the Bible that people are cursed to be black? Okay, now we get to uh, uh, Noah's curse that he put on Ham that landed on Canaan. Okay, it is not a curse like that. Uh, that is not uh, what the Bible is talking about. That curse was that his land was going to be ransacked. It wasn't about being black. I hope that answers your question. Okay, go ahead and read the next one. Straight talk. It puzzles me that Ishmael is of the Arab, but his dad was Hebrew. How does that work? Oh, well, let's go back and find out about the first Hebrew, the one who was called Hebrew first. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find out where did that Hebrew word come from? Let's go to uh, Genesis. Go on to Genesis. We're going to find out about that. The first time when we see the word Hebrew, it is ascribed to one gentleman. Hebrew, uh, Genesis 14. Genesis 14. I'm in search mode again. Please help me. Bear with me. Genesis 14. There it is. In verse 13. Go ahead and read. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Manri mm -hmm. and Amorite, brother mm -hmm. of Ishkol, the brother and brother of Anar, Anar, and these were confederate with Abram. So his brothers was not called the Hebrew. 
Abram was called the Hebrew. Mm -hmm. The very first time anybody was called the Hebrew. Now, how is Ishmael called the Arab? Well, Ishmael is Hebrew too, just like we are called Israel, but we, we're Hebrew. Okay, let's go ahead and deal with this. Let's <clears throat> go and find out about Ishmael. And how did he become the progenitor of the Arabs? All right, let's go ahead and go to the 25th chapter of Genesis. And we're going to start at verse 12. Okay. Now these are the generations of Ishmael, Abraham's son, whom Hagar, the Egyptian, Sarah's handmaid, bare unto Abraham. Yes, read on. These are the names of the sons of Ishmael by their names, according to their generation, the firstborn of Ishmael. All right. I can go ahead and read those. It's Nabajot, which is in uh, Kadar, and Abedel, and uh, me, uh, Mebesim, and Meshma, and Duma, mm -hmm. and Mesa, Hadar, and Tedum, and Tajar, not fish, and Kedema. There's 12 of them. Just like God said he was going to give Ishmael to be of 12 princes. These are all Arab states today. Mm. Is Ishmael Hebrew? Of course. But he's the father of the Arabs. Just like Jacob, our name should be Jacob, Jacobites. He is the father of, of Israel. All right. I hope that answers your question. Good question. Next question. Are there scriptures in the New Testament that teach keeping the Sabbath? Please share the scriptures. Oh, absolutely. Let's go ahead and do this. Yes, let, let's go ahead and see this. Um, Let's go to Acts the 13th chapter. Acts the 13th chapter. It's right there. You just you just didn't you have to, didn't read long enough. You just gotta keep on reading. You'll find it. You run right into it. Acts the 13th chapter. All right. Because, you know, they, they say that the New Testament is for the Gentiles. Oh, yeah, we're going to figure that one out, too. Um, let's go ahead and pick it up here. Uh, Acts 13. And we're going to we're going to read uh, Acts thirteen and uh, and just pick it up at verse fifteen, and we're going to skip. Okay. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, "Ye men and brethren, if ye have any word of exhortation." For the people say on all right so you got somebody want to preach paul raised up his hand let's go ahead and read then paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said men of israel and ye that fear god give audience all right so paul is preaching 
Let's go ahead and skip on down. We ain't going to read this whole sermon and everything. We're going to skip on down and read verse 42. And when the Jews were gone out of the synagogue, the Gentiles besought these that these words might be preached to them the next Sabbath. Now, would it be convenient for them to say, well, you know, since you um, preach this, this oh, on this Sabbath, would it be convenient for you to say, well, can you just come on Sunday, which is the next day? No. They wanted to hear the word of God on the next Sabbath. Mm -hmm. They waited seven whole days mm -hmm. to hear the same thing. Now, let me go ahead and show you how many people was there. Go ahead and read. Now, when the congregation was broken up, many of the Jews and religious prophets, prophets, proselytes, 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 proselytes Follow Paul and Barabbas with speaking to them, persuaded them to continue in the grace of God. Now, what Amen. happened the next Sabbath? Okay, let's see what happened the next Sabbath. Keep on reading. And the next Sabbath day came almost the whole city together to hear the word of God. Wow. So you mean to tell me that you can't keep the Sabbath? And it's written all throughout this book? Good question. Good question. Next question. All right, let's go to identify. Next question. How did Chinese and other nationalities come about when all of Noah's boys were black? What race was Noah's son's wife's? Uh-oh. Right into this uh, streaming is getting a little slow. Can, can you go ahead and read that one more time, Sister Zena? Yes, sir. How did Chinese and other nationalities come about when all of Noah's boys were black? What race were Noah's sons' wives? Okay, now we get into it. Now, we don't know if Noah's boys were all black. I, I can't tell you that because I wasn't there. However, I know that uh, melanin is a, is a, uh, is a, uh, uh, what you call it? What's the opposite of recessive? Uh, what's the opposite of recessive? I'm not sure, Pastor. Uh, uh, it's a definite gene. I can't, I, uh, it's dominant, a dominant gene. I'm sorry. Okay. So melanin is a dumb, dominant gene. Mm -hmm. So uh, and and so we're gonna find out how did the nation of the Asians come into place. Let's go to the tenth chapter of Genesis, and we're gonna find this out. The 10th chapter of Genesis, and we're going to find this out. All right, the 10th chapter of Genesis, and we're going to pick it up on the one. 10th chapter of Genesis, verse 1, go ahead and read it. Now these are the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right, now these three boys, all life sprung out of these three boys. Go ahead and read. And unto them were sons born after the flood. Because during the flood, nobody survived except for this family. Okay? So where did the Chinese folks come from? Let's go ahead and find out. Read verse 2. The sons of Japheth, Gomer, Magog, and Madai. Madai. Magog and Madai, Javan, Tubal, and Meshech and Tyrus. Uh-huh, I can read verse three. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz, and Rephath, and Tegomar, and the sons of Javan, Elishad, and Tarshish, Kittim, and Dedadan. By these were the owls of the Gentiles. Here it is. Mm -hmm. By these were the owls of the Gentiles divided in their land, after everyone after their tongue and their families and their nations. Mm -hmm. 
Now let's go ahead and figure out which one are Asian. That's a, that's not hard to figure out. All you got to do is Tarshish and Kittim. How do I know it's hard for them? You run down their name in, just Google their name, Tarshish and Kittim. Yeah. And it's going to land you right smack dab in Asia. Let's see, what who else? And Madai, Madai. Because you know what, Russians, they, they're not, they're not like, uh, 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 they're more of an Asian descent. That's Madai. That's the Medes. That is your Asians. And who did they come out of? They came out of JFAC. Now, we don't know what their wives were. All we know is that their wives was on the boat with them, okay? And whatever the daddies are, that's what their kids are. I hope that answers your question. Great question. Great question. Next question. Uh-huh. Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were a with a cart rope. Isaiah 5, 18 through 19. Please explain. Let's go ahead and go to the Isaiah 5. Not Isaiah 5. Not Isaiah 5. Isaiah 5. Let's see. Let's go ahead and read verse 18 and 19 again. It says, Woe unto them that draw iniquity with cords of vanity and sin as it were with the cart rope, that say, Let him make speed and hasten his work, that we may see it, and let the counsel of the Holy One of Israel draw nigh and come that we may know it all right so now this is where we have to go and find out um let's see this is talking about uh this is this is i know what this is talking about let me go ahead and show you what this is I'll go to um, let's go to Mark the seventh chapter. Mark, Mark the second chapter, Pastor. Seven, seven chapter. Mark the seventh chapter. And we're going to read verse 20 and we're going to show you something because if you got a rope that means you're carrying somebody with you right mm -hmm. let's go ahead and find out what this means uh the 20 uh the 20th verse mark 7 and 20 jesus is giving you an example of what it is go ahead and read brother and he said that with which cometh out of the man that defileth the man yes go ahead for from within out of the heart of man proceed evil thoughts adulteries fornication murders what else theft covetedness wickedness deceit lascivi lasciviousness lasciviousness uh-huh an evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness All what is lasciviousness that's a good question. What is lasciviousness? Lasciviousness is causing someone else to sin. Mm. That's what that whole thing is talking about. That's causing true. someone else to sin. So when you go ahead and read that in idea, it's talking about causing someone else to sin. Mm. 
You have a rope on there and you're carrying somebody with you. All right. I hope that answers your question. Very, very good question. And right now, I think that's our time. That's <laughs> our time. We can go on for a long time. I'm to in on this uh, group therapy. I hope that you all have been edified your questions. And uh, for your time, share. You want somebody in Jesus' name. Thank you for your time. Please state your name and occupation. And I'm going to take. Okay, now, how well do you know the Jesus? Uh, close friend of my family, Serena. He's been over to our home on occasion. Been to your home on several occasions. Is that right? Yes, I mean, are we going somewhere here? Uh, I'm asking the questions here. Now, the woman that we called earlier to testify, that's your sister, correct? Yes, that's my sister Mary. Jesus really did a number on this family. Shame. <laughs> now, that was the same woman who was reported pouring oil onto Jesus and wiping his feet with her hair. Is that correct? Yes, that's my sister. I, I, I really don't understand what the problem is. I don't understand why you're bothering us. We've done nothing wrong and neither has Jesus. Okay, well, let's just talk about your experience with Jesus. Well, okay. Uh, well, he raised me from the dead. Who did what? Jesus raised me from the dead. Okay, okay seriously. Yes, I am. Okay. All right, this is some time foolery. Seriously. Now, please humor me. Half from the dead. You supposed to die. But well, see, I was at home designing an outfit for one of my neighbors. And, well, I was eating some ice cream, and all of a sudden, I had that gas. And it started in my side and it shot up to my chest. And the next thing I know, I had chest pains all over my body. And I was waiting on it to pass, you know, from where it normally passed from, you know, back there where it normally come from. And it just wouldn't pass. So my sisters, they, they, they figured it might be good to go ahead and call Jesus to come and, and heal me, you know, because, you know, they said I wasn't looking too hot. Hit you. For what? Why wouldn't you call the doctor? Why would you call this man? A doctor? Don't you know doctors are just practicing medicine? <laughs> but you know, Jesus, uh, 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 he heals. I said he is the medicine. He is the medicine. I said he is. I'm sorry I get carried away when I'm talking about my friend. But he's been known to heal, so my sisters figured that since he was such a close friend of the family, that they would call him to come and heal. That is so touching. <laughs> it's such a sweet story, so I'm sure that he hurried right on over there to you, right? I mean, what am I saying? Since you guys are such good friends, I'm sure he did, right? 
Well, actually, he didn't make it on time. And I, I died. Oh, in this court! Buried me. <laughs> 